Adversity will come at some point. Choose your response. Every one of you think one second about the standard that was set around you. Nobody said it's gonna be easy. This is gonna be a war. Touchdown, Alabama! Ah! Pressure set! Somebody was here before you to set a standard. Today, that's your chance to carry that same standard by what you do. For those that don't know, Elle's a Georgia peach, also a bulldog, so just wanted to give everyone that. Uh, two undefeated teams clash on Saturday, and Georgia has had its struggles against Alabama, losing eight of their last ten matchups. The silver lining, you ask? Their last win came in the 2021 National Championship game. According to ESPN Analytics, Alabama has a 66% chance to win. Before we dive into the game, let's talk a little Heisman, ladies and gents. L, who needs a better performance for their Heisman chances? Is it Jalen Milrow or Carson Beck? It's Carson Beck. It's Carson Beck because he came in with greater preseason odds to win the Heisman. It's Carson Beck because people fall in love with Heisman moments. It's why it's an entitled entire thing. And he hasn't had any. And I know Georgia fans are going to get mad at me and go, L, you're always picking on Georgia quarterbacks who are almost infallible. Carson Beck is 16-1 and as a starter. That lone loss coming last year in the SEC Championship to the aforementioned Alabama. But the thing about Carson Beck is it looks like he's holding back. And yes, the numbers, we just mentioned it with Danny Dimes, are perfect. In fact, he's perfect. He hasn't thrown any interceptions. He protects the ball. He's got a very high completion percentage. In fact, he's ranked 27th nationally overall. 68.3% of his passes are completed. But then he falls all the way to 94th if you look at passes that are thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. And that drops another 20 percentage points when you look at any throws downfield. It's as if he's playing not to lose and not playing to win. And if they are going to get through what I think is the toughest run for any of the contenders in college football, they are going to need him to step up in a big and significant way. Well, uh, uh, Al Duncan, very eloquent, very beautiful, fluid delivery. You're just wrong. Because guess what? You're wrong based on the information that you gave. When you talk about him throwing beyond the line of scrimmage, that means the Heisman voters know that too. So guess what? We ain't fooled by it. We understand where he's most effective and what have you. Now, against ranked opponents, the brother does complete 72% of his completions, 11 touchdown passes, only one pick, and I get all of that. But I'm going to go with Milroy as the answer to this question because this brother right here is balling on another level. Now, that's one thing to be playing for Nick Saban, and you're learning as you go along, and you elevate your level of play over the course of a season as he did last year when he ultimately ended up outperforming Beck in the SEC title game L but the flip side to it is this now you got a new coach in Kalen DeVore we know what this man is capable of doing he's got some things to prove as a coach in the SEC he's won everywhere else he's gone he's won 90% of his games as a coach at four different institutions including two national championships in the NAIA but in the end you playing for this guy this new coach even though I think he's the one with more to prove than anybody else right now let's find out what he's all about Milroy's got 156 yards rushing he's ran for two touchdowns in each of these games he's in the conversation right now for the Heisman not just because of how Alabama has looked but because it wasn't expected because everybody expected a drop off because Nick Saban was gone so if you continue to play this way dare I say elevate your level of play under a new coach then I think that better positions you for the Heisman but if you don't then we're going to be like, well, damn, you missed out, and we're going to move forward. I think the answer to this question is Milroy. You just said it. Unexpected. It's unexpected that they've looked as good as they are, and this Alabama offense is very – feast or famine when it comes to Carson Beck he's back he's vying to be the number one overall pick in next year's draft he's got a lot more to prove they've got three touchdowns in the first half of these games the offense doesn't look good and some of that is on Mike Bobo certainly with his play calling but Carson Beck does not have the benefit that a lot of other Georgia quarterbacks have had and that the ground game is just so solid it's not it is not Trevor Etienne's doing yeah, his but best what? but it's not there so it falls on him but but what I'm saying to you is what, what the things that you articulated about Beck's limitations or how his numbers can be a bit deceiving because of what he's doing when he doesn't dip and dunk the ball. I'm saying folks who know football like yourself, Heisman voters in particular, they see this already, so they're not fooled by him. What he has to do is go out and make sure he doesn't contribute to losing this game. But gotcha. Milroy, what I'm saying is I don't believe Beck really has a legitimate shot gotcha. at the you Heisman. Don't think he, gotcha. You don't think does. he's positioned anyway. Okay. Milroy. Oh, yes, yeah, that makes sense. That's that would, what I'm saying. 
Yeah. Let me ask you this. Your Bulldogs oh. favored by one. Who on Georgia or Alabama is under the most pressure to win this game? Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart. He's one and five against Alabama, and and certainly we know, you know, Nick Saban. It was never easy for his disciples to beat him. I personally, I watched your show the other day, Stephen A., and I watched you guys just flippantly act, act like it was no big deal that Kirby did get that one win, and when it came, it came in the national championship, so it's significant. But you have got to be able to prove that you can do this. And I had Himbo, shout out to Himbo uh, from Get Up, and, and pull some of these numbers that to me underscores a coaching issue, and that is that Bama. In the first half of games, Bama's being outscored by Georgia 82 to 75. But in the second half, after halftime, Georgia's being outscored 95 to 41. That is telling me they're unable to make any of the adjustments that they need. The mystique of Nick Saban is gone. And it's no disrespect to Kalen DeBoer because every time he's been the underdog uh, in one of these games, his team always finds a way to win, save for the playoffs last year. But this is Georgia. And if Georgia is going to solidify that they are the Mm -hmm. next Alabama, that they're the great legacy team, that they're the dynastic Mm -hmm. team, especially Mm -hmm. after Alabama ended your opportunity Mm -hmm. for a three-peat, you have got to win this game. And I respect the fact that it's in Tuscaloosa and no one's won there since 2019 and all those other things. However, you have got to win this game if you are Kirby Smart, if for no other reason than to prove that you can exercise those okay. demons of Nick Saban. The blasphemy that has just come out of your mouth. Now, we will concede that you are right when we say the most pressure is on a Kirby Smart, but we're not going to act like this man is not phenomenal. Let, I got my own stats. Yes, you're absolutely right. One in five against the Crimson Tide since he arrived in 2016. 96 and 11 against everybody else yes. since 2020. One and three against Alabama. 52 and one versus everybody else. So I'm just saying the Alabama game, I get where you're coming from. And that would be a blemish. Let's just understand it's the only blemish. This is not a man yes. like Ryan Day or somebody that's looking for the national title. This is a man that is a two-time national champion, was going for a three-peat. Yes, it was stopped and derailed by Nick Saban, which made it easier for him to walk away and retire. But Kirby Smart is a two-time national champion, okay? Let, let's give love and respect where it's due. Now, here's what I would tell you. I also want to throw in this about Kay, Kay, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Coach DeBoer. His resume, I believe, is impeccable. I'm not refuting that. But that wasn't in the SEC. He in the South now, in the Southeastern Conference, okay? You got to handle your business there, all right? And his should be his coming out party. If DeBoer wants to set the record straight that it's a new sheriff in town and his name ain't Nick Saban, this is the moment to do this by continuing a trend that Nick Saban already created. You remember that guy, Nick Saban, six national titles? You understand what I'm saying? Nine SEC titles. Oh, by the way, in 17 years as the coach of Alabama, he has 18 conference losses in 17 years. This man is absolutely phenomenal. If you roll up in there and you beat Georgia, as much as we revere, and we should, the greatest college football coach to have ever lived, which is Nick Saban, that is what I firmly believe, it does go a long way for you if you can't lend the boy. If you don't win this game, it's like, oh, damn, he ain't Nick Saban. You don't want that. What I, you love, want about that. You, what I love about you, Stephen A., is that you'll disagree with me and you'll make my point in the exact same sentence, and you said it. I disagree Kirby with Smart that. Is, I disagree with that assertion. Kirby okay. Smart is incredible. He was the coach of our dreams, and he Incredible. finally brought us back to glory. They finally won a national championship. And like I said, we're going for a three-peat last year, 45-2. and two. But who are those two losses to? And nobody's going to besmirch you for losing to the great Nick Saban, someone that knows you intimately, someone that had you on their coaching staff. But it is different. This Bama team is different. And for Kirby, the pressure is there to stop a Bama team that no longer has the greatest college coach of all time at its helm. It's on Even if you got a quarterback that's dipping and dunking. If Kalen DeBoer wins this game, it's great feelings abound. But there is no pressure for them to beat the number two team Mm. in the country, someone that most people believe is still the number one team in the country despite what happened to Kitty Cat. Oh, you are wrong about that, Al. Al, Stephen A., I'm really 
only sure. loving this Alabama Georgia love, but I want to know this: Is the winner the biggest threat to win the national championship? Yes. <sighs> okay. Go ahead, Steve. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You want to? And I ain't got nothing else to say. Alden. Yes. 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 I'm going to say, this is going to sound like a homer pick. I'm going to say if Georgia wins it, mm -hmm. yes. Um, if Alabama wins it, not necessarily. I still think that Texas, <coughs> Excuse me. Ohio Bless State, you. and if I'm going to go with the dark Thank horse pick even in the SEC, I'll go with an Ole Miss. I mean, Georgia has to win this game. Ole Georgia's, Miss? Go, Georgia's schedule is a cluster. In a couple of weeks, they're going to have to face Texas on the road. They still have to go on the road against Ole Miss, and they still have to welcome in Tennessee. They've got to win this game. If they can beat this team here, yes, I think that they'll be able to sort of get back to the good feelings of their defense clicking, being able to stop the run. But if Alabama wins, I still think they're a feast or famine type of offense. And I, I just, I think Texas to this point is still the most complete team. Feast or famine? They're averaging 49 points a game, hell. Yes, and it's all big play I mean, stuff. I mean, they, they yes. feasted. I don't even want to hear yes. about famine. It's they, feast they're or averaging famine. 49 a game. It is. It is all big plays or nothing. Okay. And we've seen it play out through the first few weeks. Okay. L's not done well, it's big plays. It's not Steve big Nick. plays or nothing. It's big plays because you can record big plays. Because you can take advantage of the opposition like that. That's why it's big plays. How much?